Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Australian Association of Street Photographers Speaker Series for 2021. I'm Russell Mason, Vice President of ASPE and host for tonight. And as usual, I'd like to ask everyone to keep their devices set to mute during tonight's presentation. And if you have any questions, please type them into the chat function of the Zoom screen. Uh, I'll be moderating tonight, and uh, Steve wants to keep it pretty relaxed. So we'll be asking questions as we go. So I'll be having a look at that. and. Uh, I'll pose your questions to him as we go. So we have a bit of a different session for you tonight. I see by the Zoom invitation, we've called it Exhibiting at SITOM 2021, but um, we're recording this one. I reckon we can stick it up on the website and be a valuable resource for um, SITOM in the future. But anyway, tonight's guest speaker, we have our long-term ASPE committee member, past secretary, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't know how long you've been here, Steve, but. Um, Steve's been here forever. He's an avid street shooter and he's, he has exhibited in numerous sit-home exhibitions and a wealth of knowledge when it comes to all things sit-home. So if you ever wanted to know anything about sit-home or about exhibiting, you're too afraid to ask, here's your perfect chance. So you do so during tonight's presentation via the chat function. Without further ado, it's over to you, Steve. Thanks. Thanks, Russell. And uh, yeah, look, uh, welcome everyone. Um, Look, uh, re really, the, 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 I think the, the objective of this session is, re is really more for those exhibitors who may not have exhibited before. And, and I, I know the first time that I exhibited in sit on was my first exhibition, to be honest. And um, there, there were certain things which were quite stressful, to be honest. I, I really didn't know what I was doing. So um, that's the sort of thing I thought I'd focus on, on tonight. Um, but I'll just be going through um, really chronological order, I guess, to a certain extent of, of, of the things you'll, you'll sort of need to be um, doing in preparation for the exhibition and, and then the exhibition itself. Happy to take questions at any time, um, anything that may be on your mind. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll do my best to answer or, or one of the other um, committee members or, or exhibitors who've been there before might be able to answer. So um, yeah, you will just, we'll just, um, I'll, we'll just go through it and um, yeah, please um, pipe up if, if you have a question. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll start just by sharing the screen. Okay, there we go. So um, Sit on for exhibitors. These are some of the dates. Um, I mean, we try and put the dates in many places so that you know ex exactly where you're at. The, the, the ones in red, you should hopefully have already done. So I, I've just really highlighted them. So obviously, applications are open. Um, we've actually closed application date, but we probably could fit a couple more people into the gallery. So if, if you do know someone who, who says, oh, I wish I'd applied, there's actually time. So uh, you let them know, they can just send an email to the, the team ASPE and um, we can um, probably um, get them in. So that, that'd be good. Um, there's one or two folks who still need to pay for the exhibition. Um, so if, that, if, if, if they could do that, if, if any of those folk are on, on the line, I do that as soon as possible. That would be fantastic. Um, and you should also all be sending in your um, images, uh, sort of low res images, just for curation. So um, the curation team are busy doing that at the moment, and um, they've they've got a target of of completing that uh, by the twentieth of June. Uh, so effectively, you, you just know, yep, yep, your images are good to go. And that, that, that'll then set you up for, um, for printing and, um, and framing your images because you know what you've got. Um, the, this final item here, uh, date for receipt of image details, the, the, there's a form for that, which is, is on the resources page, which I'll show you soon. Um, you probably won't know all of your image details until you've got the, the you, until you've decided upon your framing. 
that, that that's all about um, us understanding the frame size so that we can actually set out the gallery and, and understand um, which areas things will fit and things like that. It, it also gives us information which we'll use in the catalogue uh, for the exhibition. And we'll also be printing some um, labels to be put underneath the images. So that's not something you'll have to do. That's something we'll do, um, labeling the images. So that, that's gonna be an important piece, um, but you've got a bit of time for that, uh, 11th of July, um, before you need to do that. Um, uh, just another point. Um, you do actually need to be a member of ASPE to be in the exhibition, although we've accepted all the, the people have applied at this stage. Um, please, for those who, who aren't members, please send in your, your membership. That would be fantastic. There is actually a link on, on, the, on the website. Um, so yeah, yeah, please do that. So um, fundamentally, hopefully very soon within the next week or so, you'll, you'll be getting confirmation from the curation team that, that your images are good to go. And so that, that's um, where you need to start to um, print and frame your images. And um, oh, yeah, sorry, before I get into that, the, the, we've, we've got a lot of information on the website that you can use uh, and refer to. So if you go to the WSB, uh, website, sb.com.au, click on resources at the top, you'll get to this page and then there's sit home resources, uh, click on that. There, there are some other ways to get there, but that, that's one way. And that will take you to this page and information, there's a few information sheets that have been developed over time. And that, that, there's a lot of information there. In fact, in fact, all you need to know is really there. Um, fact sheet one images and submitting them for approval. Um, a lot of information there. Um, image hanging guidance, that, that, that's all about um, when we um, hang the, your, your, your framed pictures in, in the gallery. Um, and I'll be covering that in more detail, detail later on. Uh, information about the exhibition itself. And of course, some uh, information on sales. So we, we do effectively, and this you don't want to, everything in the exhibition is, is up for sale. Um, we, we do have um, a, a good number of sales every year. So um, not that I've ever sold anything, but uh, <laughs> some people do. And, and there are often some Im images which will sell um, multiple, multiple copies, which is great for those particular photographers. Uh, there's also a link to the image details form, which we will be requesting you, you send that form in down the track. And then, then just a bit of information on, on what, what the space might look like on the gallery wall and how you might want to um, align your images and things like that. So all useful information. So I recommend you, you check those fact sheets and uh, look out for the uh, planning your wall space um, documents and uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty useful information. It's been developed over the last decade of exhibitions and refined as time goes by, so it, it's, it's pretty useful. Printing and framing. Um, there's a few um, printers that have closed down over the last 12 months, which is a crying shame. Um, Michael's was was a good example of that. They, they they did some good good quality um, printing, but they've closed down their their, their print shop now. They they're online of for sales, of course, but I I, I didn't see any link for, for printing. But there, here's a few options. You may have your own um, um, place that you you like to get um, things printed, but we thought we'd provide some link, and I, I think um, uh, Mark Davidson may have already sent you most of these, although the last one here is a late, late edition. And framing. Um, framing can be quite expensive or it can be quite reasonable. If you were to get IKEA frames, I use IKEA frames, they're, they're very reasonable in price and reusable as well. They actually look perfectly 
good on the wall and a good number of people actually actually use them. Um, not necessarily the best quality though, and they have been known to uh, come apart at times. So there, there are other, other uh, places you can get your images framed. Um, I, the first year I ever exhibited, I spent a lot of money on printing and framing and I, I, I went to a place which did it all in one. You sent the images and they, they both printed and, and framed for you. It was expensive. I wouldn't recommend it as a result, so it's not on the list. But you can do that if, if you really like your prints and think, hey, I, I, I want to keep these forever on my wall, my own wall. You could do that. that could, and um, you'd get some really good quality outcomes then. Um, the ones we have here are, are, are reasonable um, pricing. So um, but that, that's why we've, we've recommended them here. So number of options. You don't have to use those. Use whichever out, out, outfit you're interested in. By the way, feel free to ask questions if, if anyone come off mute and just pipe on in, that would be fine. Um, yes. Steve, there's a question in the chat from Mike a while ago. Is it good to standardize on an exhibition size and therefore use the same frame again and again, albeit an IKEA or custom frame? That, that's individual choice. It's something I do because um, it reduces my costs year on year. Um, it, it's over to you, you know, if, if, if you want, um, you know, you, some, some, some people actually have very specific concepts um, with their prints every year. And so, you know, sometimes they'll do very large prints one year and smaller prints an, another year. Um, my mine are fairly, fairly standard. That, that, that's just my approach, and so I, I, I would, I will, I reuse my frames every year. Um, which, which does actually bring me on to to another point. Actually, size size of, of your prints um, might be a question in your mind. I would say seventy percent of exhibitors would their, their their print size would be approximately A three, and then they'd have the the, the frame and and mat. Um, within the frame, um, just larger than that. Um, it, it's a good size, and I've I've got some example pictures um, further on, which which are exactly that that configuration sort of thing. Um, an A4 print is is definitely the image is definitely the smallest you want, and you you'd need a a good size frame for that because it, it can be a bit small otherwise. And it, it, it can get lost in, in the, the, just the size of the gallery if you're not careful. So we wouldn't recommend going below A4 size for the print and with the frame and mat around that as well. Um, but at the other, other extreme as well, some people have had some very large prints um, and, and that, that's great. It, it's good to have a bit of variety. Um, over to you. Every, every, everything's up to you, but um, if, if there is uncertainty, you feel free to reach out to Team Aspie and then I'm sure someone can, can give you some, some assistance. I uh, have some um, other dates more around actual exhibition as, as well. So Wednesday the 28th of July is what we call hanging day. So I think the gallery is open between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and you come in at some stage during that day um, and you'll need to, to hang your prints um, on the walls. Um, that, that can be quite stressful for those who haven't done it before. So I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail further on, just with a few um, tips and a few, uh, just, just, just um, hopefully that'll answer a, a few questions there. The next day will be exhibition opening day, which is Thursday, the 29th of July. Um, now on Friday evening, we have our opening event. Um, so you're all welcome to attend that and you're welcome to invite a couple of family and friends to, to join you for the opening event. Um, what we'd like to do there is, is, is for each of the exhibitors to, to, to bring a, a small plate and some drinks um, and that that can, you know, just enough for yourself and, and, and the number of guests you have, but then we share it all. 
and um, you know for, for everyone who, who, who's attending the opening event and um, and then that can be a, a good opportunity to to meet your fellow exhibitors face to face um, this is the first time we've actually had a Zoom session prior to the exhibition. So um, often no one's ever seen anyone's face. It, it has, has happened. <laughs> um, the exhibition is then open daily, uh, weekdays 10 till 4, and I think weekends 1 p.m. till 4. Um, last day of the exhibition is Monday the 9th, and Tuesday the 10th, um, is when we dismantle and that that's between 10 a.m. And, and 2 p.m. So a lot easier to dismantle uh, and, and on hanging day, by the way, typically it might take you an hour or 90 minutes to, to, to hang your things um, or, or less. If, if you've got a double row, um, then it might take a bit longer. So just, just be aware of that if you've chosen um, to have a double row of, um, of prints. Now, during the exhibition, we, we, we need to have someone at the gallery at all times, really just to note down sales and things like that. So everyone gets a, a rostered half day on. And um, so um, later on, in a few weeks' time, we'll, we'll be sending out uh, the roster a request for people to, to choose their half day. So that half day is three hours. It'll either be 10 to 1 or 1 to 4 weekdays or one to four on weekends. So um, appreciate if everyone can, can pitch in there and that can be a bit of an experience as well. Re really um, what we ask people to do there if, uh, is to just, just say hello to people who come in the door to have a look and um, maybe just ask them um, where they heard about the exhibition. That can be very useful for us. Um, in our marketing of the exhibition and in, in, in subsequent years. Um, the um, numbers of people coming in are usually quite steady. I wouldn't say it gets it gets crowded, but in saying that, um, the, the gallery has told us that that our exhibition is the most popular one they, they have every year, which is which is really nice to know. So um, Basically, I'll, I'll move on. This is an example of what, what your prints might look like on the wall. Now, I, I've chosen a double row of prints here. Most people have a single row. Um, and a single row will sit on the ledge. And it will have a, a basically what you'll need to do is, is, is put a hook on the back of your, your frame to hook over the, the, the bottom rail here. Um, there'll be labels um, provided to, to put at the base of every print. And you can also, on the ledge, put business cards and things like that, especially, you know, uh, if you have a website or if you, if you have your own business even, feel free to leave a business card or set a, a lot of business cards because people do take them. Um, so you can leave those there. For those people who have a double row, and by the way, the, the, these prints you see here, these are all A3 size with the IKEA frames. And I think the IKEA frames are, are 50 by 40 centimeters. Um, they do smaller frames for A4 size prints. But you see the, the size, the, the height of the, of, of the frame um, is just over the, the, that, that bottom row, which it has to hook over. So, you just just be careful not to um, be too small with with your frame because it, it could be a bit more of a challenge. But there are ways of of dealing with that, which which we'll get to. The the top row here, um, the, these are actually mine. Um, being lazy, I've only put a single um, string. There's a hook over the top rail and a string which which comes down, hooks on to the the the, the um, back of the print. I've never had one fall off. Um, I sometimes worry, to be honest, <laughs> they could. Um, others have done um, uh, two, two wires or strings per, per um, frame, which is, is, is probably a bit safer. And um, yeah, so th this, this is a standard layout. 
for, for 10 um, images. Um, these are all landscape. You might have a mix of landscape and portrait and you might just, um, you know, arrange them in a way that looks aesthetically pleasing. In, in many ways, it's so, I, I, yes. Oh, sorry, so I've got, a, just, I've got a really good question here from Clement saying, um, Clement saying that uh, what should we bring to hang the photos during the hanging day? So um, can we yep. no, that, listen that, on that? That, that, that's a good point. So if you have if you have a double row, then you are going to need to bring your, your wires and the hooks over the top. Um, they're, they're very standard hooks. Um, I've got a picture of all of this further on. Um, and in the resources page, there's, there's actually some, some links as well to, to Bunnings. <laughs> who actually sell these things, which is pretty handy. They, they, and, and they're pretty reasonable value at, at Bunnings. Um, otherwise, really, you just need to bring your, 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 your framed prints, business cards, things like that. We will supply the labels. I'll, I'll, I'll get to how the, the bottom rail should be um, attached and uh, that's to use these uh, specific hooks provided by the gallery. Now you won't have to bring those, but if you choose not to use those, you, you, you'll need to provide an alternative. So I'll, I'll show you that later. So the gallery has a ladder. So if, if you do have a double row and you need to climb up high, they, they have a couple of ladders. Um, and I think that, that that's basically it. Um, so yes, Steve, Emma. Uh, Denise is also asking what the maximum size of a print is, please, just roughly. Um, so you said that it depends on how many images you have. So yeah, do you want to that, talk that's about exactly the right. Of the size of the space, perhaps. I, I will. So th these ones are actually spaced out quite quite a lot. I think we had less exhibitors that year. Normally, they, these prints would be closer together. So that you, you should expect that you will get 2.9 meters left to right. And you want a space of a few centimeters between each one. So think about the width of your frame and the space that you'll need in between and the number of prints you got and try and fit it within 2.9 meters. Um, if you have any trouble there, you know, we, we, we let us know and, and we can see, see what we can do. Um, but if, if, if you have, um, for example, you might have three very large prints, in which case th this would be plenty of room for, for, for three prints, for example, if they're very large. Um, and if, if they're a bit small, naturally there'd, there'd be loads of space. Um, does that answer the question? Do you want, is there a specific detail that I might not have covered with that answer? No, I think that's pretty good, Steve. I mean, you're actually buying, you're really getting real estate here, aren't you? So if it's a tall image, it doesn't really matter, but I think it's just the width that we're really concentrating on, so. Exactly. And some people in the past have just exhibited one or two images in, in their alone space, um, and they've been huge. So kind of whatever, whatever you can fit in the space, really. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly right. So yeah, yeah, expect minimum of 2.9 metres. Um, we, we can certainly supply a little bit more if it's, if it's required and fill it whichever way you want, but just be aware you'll need a bit of a gap between the prints, otherwise it doesn't look very um, pleasing to the eye. Okay, any, any more questions here? I'll, I'll move on and I'm happy to come back to anything as people, people would like. Okay, this is, this, this, this is the, the gallery um, preference to, ha to how your, your prints, your bottom row of prints um, are set in the gallery. So normally they would sit on the ledge and there would be a hook which hooks over this, um, this bottom rail, as they call it. 
Now the gallery provides the hooks and that hook has been, there's a drill and it's been drilled into the frame. So it works very well for wooden frames, but it doesn't work so well for plastic or metal. Um, it's actually very easy. Um, you only really need one hook and it's extremely secure. The gallery actually provide the drill. They provide a, a um, I'll, I'll call it a, a tool, but basically it's, it's a thing. You put your frame in it, it's got a hole. You drill through that hole and that's exactly where it needs to be. And then, and then you just put the hook in and hook it on. It's surprisingly yeah. easy. Sounds scary. I, I, I call that a template, um, Steve. You put template? the template on and it'll show yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. So um, I've, I've, I've tried to zoom in on that picture so you could see a bit closely. This is just a little L hook. Um, and that's normally how um, the gallery prefers you to um, mount them on, on, onto the wall. You don't have to do that. You, you could have some other way of mounting. You could use a little gold hook and hook it over a string. I've done that in the past and it's, it's actually less secure. And I've seen people drop their prints trying to, to get them um, hooked hooked on, smash the glass and, and, and in a rush have to rush out to um, Ikea and get a new frame. Um, so th this is actually, uh, actually a surprisingly good way to do it. it. It doesn't, I don't think people feel it destroys their frames, um, if that concerns you. Um, but th this is basically the, the approach that the, the gallery prefers, though they, they're not dictating that. We'll also have people there who can show you how to do it. Um, um, so, so there's plenty of support. Any questions on that one? Okay, happy to come back. Now, this is what I've used when I've had a double row. Um, and you can get this thing from Bunning. So this, this is a standard hook. It's a very standard thing that um, comes in a variety of colors, uh, gold, white, silver. We, we, we gold tends to be a bit of a standard in, in the gallery. Um, we, we do have some, the SB team, but bring some of your own just in case because they've been known to run out. Um, and, and yeah, so, so just, just be careful of that. That this is a, that this is a um, very thick fishing line type of thing. And, and this hook is adjustable. It, it, it's really fantastic. It, um, so you can adjust the height very easily and um, that would hook under your string or onto the, um, uh, if you've got um, the, the, the rings at the, the, the sides of each uh, of the edges of your frame, and you've got two of these, you could hook it onto those very easily. Um, it, it's a very good way for your top row of um, connecting them, but I'll say it, they're, they're not necessarily cheap. I think they're $10 each, which doesn't sound like many, but if you've got five frames, then, and if you wanted two each, that's $100. So it's not cheap. You can certainly use standard hanging wire and things like that. The, the difficulty with wire, wire, which is not adjustable, is it's quite difficult to, to get your, your, your pictures then at the same height um, as they hang in the gallery. So it, it, that can, whereas this is fully adjustable, if you make a mistake, you just go back and, and readjust it. So, it is actually a very easy and, and efficient way of hanging that top row if you've, if you've got two rows. That, those are basically um, all the slides I put together. Um, the, 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 the other item I just wanted to cover actually is, I mentioned that all the, the prints are, are for sale. If, if you choose, you don't have to sell them, but um, they all are. So. The, the other question people always have is, is around pricing. Um, we, what, what we try and do is, is not to undersell. Um, it, it costs you money to enter this exhibition. It costs you money to print. It costs you money to frame, plus all your time, 
your 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 artistic capabilities. So so we do actually try and set a minimum for the um, uh, the the sales prices and, and and that minimum for an a4 sized print has traditionally been 190 and for an a3 size print 250. Um, you can price your prints at much higher than that, that that's no problem um, and people often do. Um, some people actually do very specialist Printing on steel and things like that, and and they'll sell theirs for for you know seven hundred dollars and, and and things like that. So, um, yes, so so certainly we we try not to underprice because we feel it devalues everyone's work in in, in doing that. So that, that that's why we why we try to set set those minimums. So hopefully that's a bit of a guide. Um. Yeah, so that, that, that's basically all I've got. Question, Steve, around, oh, hang on, what's just happened there? I've, I've just unshared, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brent is asking, does the gallery provide glassware and crockery on the opening night, and is there a limit to the number of people you can invite? Do that. Provide, well, um, we've, we've traditionally, I think we've traditionally bought uh, plastic cups with us, but Aspie have some glasses now, which which we will be um, providing. Russell, do you think we've got enough? Um, yeah, I'm sure we've got enough. Um, I was just wondering though, you know, in this, like in, in Victoria now with the with COVID rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I mean, I don't know if we have to adhere by some of the some of the gallery's rules regarding this so that, that that's a good point um, um okay. I'm, I'm just thinking that maybe we should um, send out uh another email advising people on what we can do um after we confirm with the gallery what we're actually allowed to do because yeah you're same actually, same yeah. goes with that question though asking about the the number of number of people you can invite um yeah sorry um and that might be restricted as well so I guess we can put a caveat on that saying that um, as soon as we know, um, we'll let everybody know. So there might be a, bit, a few emails back and forth um, until hanging day. But that's what I would suggest there. Um, there was another... In the circumstances. A uh, big button? Yeah, I think that's the best we can do in the circumstances. Uh, somebody, uh, Dan, has asked if if he's out of town on work commitments, um, is he able to have a friend set up on his behalf? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah we, we do ask that if someone can't um, hang or dismantle, that, that they arrange um, for someone to do it for them. Um, we'll, we'll certainly try and give that person guidance, but um, ideally, if they've got some sort of experience in this sort of thing, it, it, it's useful, but, but otherwise... Um, yeah, but, um, let us know who it is, uh, their name, and, um, and and that they're doing it for you if that, if that's what happens, and um, we'll 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 steer them on their way. Yeah, I think you mentioned it before that there's quite a lot of experienced committee members there on hanging day, and they they will hang around and, and help people out. So yeah, just uh, make yourself known uh, or get them to make themselves known, and we can sort that out for them. I just have to say on the on the framing um, aspect, like it's always seems to be a sticking point because it is probably the most expensive part, apart from, I guess the, you know the the entrance cost, entrance cost. But um, my suggestion is quite good. If you wanted to, you could go out and do what you were saying, getting a three frames. And if you wanted to exhibit a four, we can still use the same frames, but then just get a mat cut to suit the. Um, to suit the image so if you're looking at saving money like I mean, you, you think you're going to be doing this like uh down the track or it, that that's that's going to be another a cheaper option as well so i thought i'd mention that um that's that's a good good point from mike i thought um one of the things that i would mention is that i mean 
it's probably only convenient for those who live in the north, but the um, frames ready made uh, are quite a, are quite reasonably priced, mainly because you can do part of the work yourself. Um, so they they will give you a hand, but you actually do the framing of the image once you've chosen the, the frame itself. So they're pretty good um, and reasonably priced. And also I think they give you a 25% discount if you're a exhibitor. So I've used them, they're pretty good. So are we able to, um, are they going to be in an email that we'll send out shortly? Yeah, do you know, Emma? The they're already in the email. Okay, so there'll be an email sent out shortly um, with some of the points that Steve's touched on tonight and it'll have uh, information and links to framers and printing options for you there. Um, I had a question before was uh, in regarding um, like payments and, and membership payment. Uh, we're making, we, we have been updating what we're doing with the membership uh, lists, etc., and there's been a few changes in there. So, if anyone uh, hasn't uh, hasn't received a, a, an ASTI membership email or confirmation of that, um, hopefully it'll be something else soon. If you if you've got any questions regarding that or, or concerned, if you're not a member, you can always um, send Team ASPI an email, and we can get back to you straight away with that. We've just been updating our database spreadsheet, um, so there's been a bit of time taken up there and our membership guy has been uh, quite busy doing other things at the moment so we're a bit behind with that. Excellent, oh, well, um, I'm, I'm, look, honestly, um, I'm glad there's so many people interested. Um, it is a good experience um, exhibiting in, in, in a gallery. Um, it always amazes me, to be honest, how much better your images look up on the wall. And, and I'm serious. It, it, it's great. It, it, it's a great experience. It's really good to see your work up there. Um, I highly recommend it. it you, you want to come back um, and, and do it again. I think it's, it's, it's good stuff. I'll just add to that too, Steve, is when, when you view work as a collection or like a like a collection of collections, everything seems to flow as well. It's um, it's not like you're, you're putting out one image there to be um, scrutinized. I guess it all just flows with the whole street feel of the gallery. And you mentioned before about how popular the exhibition is. Well, um, this is our 10th year of exhibiting at that uh, gallery. And like I say, it's been the most popular every year. I can really see why it's a, it's a varied um, kind of fluid kind of exhibition where um, you know, in many different styles, uh, many different framing options, many different sizes. It's um, it's really quite good. So, um, yeah, everybody that contributes is, um, really gets something out of it, and the it, it work does really look fantastic on the wall. Excellent. Um, look, so Terry's got a question oh, yep. about recommendations for paper quality. Anybody want to answer that? Because I know nothing about paper quality, Terry. I just asked the printer to choose. <laughs> I've, got, I've got something I can say on that. Um, the guys that I use is SMLX Al, and they're in Paran, and um, they use um, mainly Ilford, um, uh, mainly cotton rag and um, some gold fiber cloth as well. Um, I don't know, I think, how much do you value your work and how much do you value your prints? Um, I use those guys. I don't think they're expensive. Um, you can have a look at their website and all the prices are there. We can go in and have a look at their options. But um, I tend to go for a really high quality paper and, and a nice print, um, like a, a, a nice gicle print, as they call it, is that's my best French. But um, there's a whole range of options too, from printing at home to whatever. There's some fantastic printing, print printers out there and some fantastic uh, stock paper you get. But uh, really, if you're just going to have four or five prints, you can, it, it's a, it's quite a, um, a well, I'm not going to say cheap, but it's, it's, um, it's a really good value for money option to go and get yourself a, a print from one of those guys. Um, yeah, and, they, and they're, um, 
they're professional grade papers. So um, you'll end up with a, a print that you'll love. Yeah, Susan's got some paper options there. Hanson, Bart, how do you pronounce that, Susan? Come on, give it to me. A little bit of a writer, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just use Ilford papers for both um, inkjet printing and, and darkroom stuff. So that, that um, it's up to you. I, it, when they're on the wall, though, you know, it's uh, I. Steve was talking about before, like if you want to print on metal or you want to print on anything. Like, we had we had someone exhibiting last year that that had Polaroids that were then reproduced onto paper. Um, what kind of look and feel do you want? You know, if you wanted something grainy or gritty or, you know, more street and all that, you, you could go for a really, you know, a different paper or, or something that you think that would, give the, you know, that that's kind of feel to, to, um, to your print. But if you wanted something which is, you know, muse museum quality archival stuff, then you'd be looking at, like maybe the papers that I mentioned or, 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 or Sue's mentioned. Yeah, is there anything? I think Jane, Jane's just saying that in the feed here, the paper is determined by the printer and the inks generally. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. You're gonna have a high quality professional um, printer. I don't think you're going to be running your, your old office works A4 through it. So, <laughs> um, I do have one other question up the up the stream here, and it was um, Verona was asking about. Uh, I know I mentioned that about the membership stuff. Yeah, that's it. But I don't have anything else coming through, Steve. So um, I don't know if there's any if there's nothing else. Maybe actually wind it up here. Um, like I mentioned before, we'll be sending out a few emails uh, to the exhibitors. Um, so keep your eye out in your inbox for those. Um, and hopefully that we can address anything moving forward. But um, I'd just like to thanks, thank you very much, Steve, for, for a great presentation. Hopefully it's answered some of the questions or made people feel at ease on the hanging day. And that there's always people around, like I said, so that usually goes quite smoothly. And yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good day. It's a pretty fun day. Um, so on behalf of um, all, all the ASPE members, I'd like to thank you for your time and presentation tonight. Um, no worries. Thanks, Steve. All right, so I guess I'll just finish with um, what we have next for our next speaker series. We have Sam Ferris, guy from Aussie Street, uh, very avid street photographer from Sydney. That's the first Tuesday of next month, that's July the 13th. Um, so you can put that in your diary. And uh, yeah, just remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't and check out our Insta feed for the monthly challenges. So uh, Steve mentioned, I guess we've got a few shots, uh, a few spots left in this year's sit home. So if you're thinking about exhibiting or if you know someone who would like to get in and uh, exhibit, we're getting quick, send us an email to Team Aspie and we'll get you sorted. And finally, if if you have any questions regarding sit-home memberships or anything else, like I said before, please contact us by the contact page of our website, aspie.com.au. So thank you all for joining tonight. And uh, I don't know, hopefully we get our lockdown. I hope to see you on the streets soon. All right. Uh, stay safe and uh, see you all next month.